Okay, we've got a lot to cover this week. We're talking about cartography. And in particular, we're talking about um, thematic cartography. Reference maps talk about and show us where things are. Thematic maps emphasize spatial patterns that come from the data that's being represented. It's the difference between mapping places and mapping data. A reference map might show us things like um, bank locations, cities, roads, um, you know, they're naviga navigational on purpose, but reference, um, sorry, thematic maps might show us average income per county or, um, you know, population density. So mapping data versus mapping locations. Okay, so this set of slides, we're going to talk about why making maps. And it's two-sided. First, don't make a map if you don't need to. If you're trying to show like the total number of impossible burgers consumed you know, on Tuesday, uh, a bar chart is gonna show us a raw count much more effectively than maybe a map would. If we're looking at you know, trying to compare the, the um, states across the board like this. But if we're looking for spatial patterns or if we think we might be able to tease out some kind of spatial patterns, then obviously a map comes into play. It's also just a, a compelling way to tell a story. You can read a Wikipedia article about um, the slave trade um, or check out a flow map that you know, really quickly shows where you know, and to where the um, volume of slave trade was happening. So it's, it's an effective way of, of telling a story. We can combine maps, like we can combine maps um, to tell a bigger story and combine them with, with charts and graphs. They don't all have to be spatial. Um, this is a, a beautiful combination of um, maps and charts that tells a much bigger and more interesting story. So overall trends, flow patterns, immigrants get closer to being able to detect some actual numbers, and then, you know, to and from, I'm not really sure why there's a 10,000 kilometer scale bar down here, but let's just, or this one. Don't put scale bars on, on maps that don't need scale bars. It's a real novice thing to do. Okay, some other cool ideas for maps. This is, um, this is called extruding, and you can do this in Arc Scene, in Arc Pro, um, or in Arc Map. But in Arc Map, you have to use uh, the external Arc Scene software. Arc Pro has Arc Scene integrated into it. So, international passenger arrivals to Canada and the United States in 2007, and that value is being extruded in height. So, the height of the point um, represents the value that's being mapped. You have to be really careful with these. We can do that in an area way where the, the country, like the whole polygon, is being extruded, but it gets messy very quickly. So yeah, you have to, you have to use these carefully. I think points work better. Counties work pretty well, um, especially if there's a really big difference between counties. But when the difference between um, the area units are small, it just ends up looking pretty cluttered. And we can um, encode more than one thing and make some pretty interesting maps. Um, think about what's being encoded and how here. So we have color, we have point size. Um, it's hard to know plant capacity by power source. So each point represents a plant and then what type it is and then this sized by the capacity. And then combined with another chart to just provide more information. I think that's a powerful thing that I'd love to see you guys doing for your final projects. Okay, and then um, I want to introduce you to this guy, John Nelson, who works for Esri. Um, if Alberto Cairo is my data viz crush, John Nelson is definitely my cartography crush. His job is to sit around and just make really cool hacks for mapping and cartography to make things very effective and visually stunning. He invented the Firefly map, this kind of glowing um, idea. He's got these 30-second um, or one-minute hacks. So if you go to YouTube or just Google John Nelson and Esri, he's got blogs. Um, he's got a YouTube channel with all these awesome, um, you know, quick tricks for, for how to make cool maps, like a Lego map, um, how to make a map that looks like felt. I don't even know why you'd want to do that, but 
John Nelson sat down and figured out how. So yeah, if you are a map geek like I am, um, you're definitely going to check out John Nelson's work. Um, and the most fun thing about him, hang on one second, is that he has two part um, blog write-ups. So part one will be a visualization, and then part two is how to do it yourself, which is awesome. He's all about um, letting people, inviting people, begging people to steal his ideas from them and just riff off what he does. So here's one page that he has about tornado migration. Um, he has um, created some individual maps. He's got small multiples, so tornadoes um, in each month of the year. He talks all about the uh, theory that goes into these things, his process, weighted mean center movement diagram. So for each month, the size of the circle represents the spread of the tornadoes for that month spatially. And then um, here's a look at the small multiples. And then he just decided to animate it for you. So here's um, tornado strikes by county. I mean, wow. Over the course of the year. Amazing. And so, like I said, then part two would be, okay, now how do you do it? And he's got the instructions. Yeah, he is absolutely incredible and a ton of fun. And um, if you go to his YouTube channel, which I think I have open here. He's got, and I'm gonna have you guys watch this on the COVID pulse. He talks through um, this awesome visualization that he did using COVID data. But I mean, here's his um, YouTube channel and you can see he's got playlists on terrain, Arc Pro, blah, 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 one minute hacks. But then he's got all these just great videos where he shows you how to make things look historic. Um, it's it's endless and overwhelming and inspiring and challenging and um, pretty awesome. So uh, that's it for this first set, and we'll get going on the next stuff.